and welcome back to another epic week in Morton Sports. Ryan Lindley, Eric Myers, and Coach Lindley, we have lots of things happening, and let's start with the big rollers of the week. Yeah, absolutely, and pun intended there because our big rollers are our Morton High School bowling team made it to state, finished top 13 in the state, first time Morton High School bowling has been to state, only the second year after the program, and they make it to the state. 50-50 going to state, and those aren't bad odds, so uh, great job to our bowlers there, and Kind of a memorable experience. Yeah, I think so. And we had an opportunity to talk with Matt and Mike Robinson. Uh, they're back. Right? I, I said they might be our I'm not sure about this. They may be our first returning student guests. But pretty close. If pretty not. close, if not. But they, they came back. We had a chance to talk with them about the state experience. So let's take a look at that interview. Welcome back here, MPTV Coaches Show. You may recognize these gentlemen. We had them with us earlier in the year. We got Mike and Matt Robinson. We're talking Morton Bowling. You just went to state. We'll talk about that here in a second. Just kind of talk about sectionals when you found out, hey, we're going to go to state. You know, just that experience there. Well, it's really significant to us because last year uh, when we went to sectionals, we ended up in around 16th. We didn't do so well, but it was our first year. Yeah. And so we were kind of bummed. But then going into uh, two weeks ago, that Saturday, we were pumped up, we were ready, and we showed up. Yeah. We got second place. Awesome. And I got first place overall with uh, 1478, but everyone carried their weight. We all put in, and we're just, we were just really excited about that because, like, second year of the bowling team, and we're going to state. Yeah, I know. That, that's awesome. And then I guess just transition into that, kind of talk a little bit about the state experience in kind of, maybe even beyond just the bowling. Like, what's it like when you get that opportunity to kind of know you're competing at that highest level? Yeah, so when we go to state, you know, that's the best bowlers in the state for, for youth, you know, teenagers. And there's, you know, that first day you get there, you know, everyone's kind of unproven yet that first day, you know, new lanes, new conditions. And once you get to those first six games and you get that, that, that you know, see who's where and what, and then you get to that second round. Sadly, we weren't able to advance the second round. We were only 37 pins out, and that's like three or four <laughs> spares, which, you know, you can always look back on that and say, you know, I didn't make it because of the spares, but that's just something you always got to work on. And sometimes, you know, conditions apply that it's hard and we can't get those spares and we can't get the strikes together to get those pins. But, you know, we were 30, so we were... 13th best high school team in the state and that's that's nothing to got you know to look down upon that's great you know we're a great team we accomplished a lot this year much better than last year yeah i totally agree yeah you want to add to that well i think the team had some really great chemistry we had a lot of senior bowlers specifically we have four seniors it was uh, me matthew toby cowley and then will lamar each and every one carried their weight especially will being able to uh, perform his last few games He's really the first time he bowled with the varsity okay, team. Okay, nice. He did awesome. We were so we're so proud of him. But we also got the younger uh, individuals who also carried their weight. And I'm excited for what they're going to do because it seems they all work really well together. And we have something that we got. We got a family in the bowling team that I hope really continues after we're gone. Yeah, talk a little bit, kind of expand upon that. I mean, you guys feel. I feel like you guys are kind of set the legacy, right? Because we talked about it last time you guys were here. Like this bowling has been a huge family thing for you guys. How do you kind of feel like you know you're leaving this program, but you're leaving something really good behind you? I, I think personally, we've set a good expectation of what you have to do. You know. Along with it, we have a great coach, Pete Burdett. You know, he's a great boy in the area. He's proved himself as, as someone who can not only teach but also coach our team to be, getting higher and being a higher expectation. And I think those underclassmen are able to take that in, and they're able to work with Pete, and we're able to build a stronger team. And we just, we just kind of built an atmosphere of uh, kind of excitement with it you know we wanted to do the best we could do and then kind of maybe wrap it up with this i mean obviously this isn't the last bowling you guys are going to do uh, you know it's going to be something you're going to probably be doing your whole life what do you guys kind of personally do in bowling wise as far as just continuing your experience as bowlers well coming up we have there's certain tournaments to do there's a brothers tournament at landmark in peoria that's like been going on for like a long time so we get to do that with uh me and Matt, and then also our dad does it with his brother-in-law. But we also partake in just regular old leagues where you just bowl out in certain days of the week. Fantastic, guys. Thanks a lot for joining us again. 13th best team in the state of Illinois feels pretty good. Mm -hmm. So congratulations. We'll be right back after this. So there you can hear from those guys. Pretty energetic. Awesome about the experience. And as Coach pointed out before when we were talking to them, like, 
almost like full circle there. Yeah. You know, we've talked to them preseason. We talked about how bowling kind of works. And then after the season, kind of some of those big plans that they got for themselves and the team going forward. Yeah, I'm kind of excited. I mean, we even talked to them a little bit off camera, just the idea that, you know, the Morton bowling team, obviously with Coach Burdett, he does a great job. And that there's a lot of expectations that made it state this year. Maybe next year's younger guys that'll become the older guys. Their job now is to make it day two a state. Maybe a little teaser here, but maybe look for some Morton Junior High Volleyball on a Morton Potter TV YouTube channel maybe next week or so. Just throwing it out there maybe check that out so let's switch gears you had the opportunity last night to head out to the Potter Dome call a really physical game last night for boys basketball yeah boys basketball played pure Emanuel last night unfortunately dropped the game 42 34 extremely physical I think it's a great way to yeah. describe it uh, you know Potters were right in the game for for three quarters three and a half quarters really and then Manuel made a run at the end it's one of those games though you know Potters are still you know half game ahead of Metamora in the middle line I it's a game that really doesn't hurt you a lot I mean Potters are most likely a two or three seed in the subsectional winning this game might have clinched the two seed but they're still right there and I, I think coach Zeller even talked to us a little bit after the game talked about how we did learn a lot from this one well not only that I think it's really good sometimes to play teams outside your comfort zone we don't have a ton of teams that we match up against that are lengthy really physical uh, play a little bit different style offense and maybe even a little bit defense preparing yourself for those postseason runs where you're going to play a whole bunch of different teams a lot similar to that Niles North game we had you know last week but like in our backyard, great matchup, great game in the Potter Dome. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think your point is really good. I mean, you look at going forward, I mean, one team that's sort of in our backyard, but we have, we don't play on our schedule this year, but you may see in the postseason, it's Richwoods. Correct. And I think Richwoods has a very similar style to Manual. So again, definitely a learning experience. Yeah, we should get those seeds next Friday, I think probably around 4 p.m. So hopefully if there's anything out there, you can check those. Uh, Morton Potter TV all the socials for that on that realm. But you had an opportunity to sit down with Coach Zeller last night after the game? Yeah, after the game. And, you know, we just kind of, we obviously talked about the game. We, we, I won't, we won't show you that part of the interview, but we want to go to a quick little clip here. Big weekend in the Potter Dome. Um, we'll talk pink night for girls basketball. We'll talk about that maybe in a little bit in our next segment. But game ball run for the guys, the game ball run game is this Saturday. The game ball run run is this Friday. And Coach Zeller gave the quick little game ball run sales pitch. So let's take a look at that. Kind of sales pitch game ball run night on Saturday. Game ball run on uh, on Saturday is a, a great opportunity for us to, uh, to to just help out with the Children's Hospital and uh, the, the money that's been already raised with the uh, donations that we've, we've gotten and the, and the fundraising that's gone on has been awesome. And uh, and that, that night is just a accumulation of all of it coming together. And uh, um, it's going to be a great night. So hopefully come out to the Potter Dome and, uh, and support a, um, a great a great call. And, and come out Friday night for the run. Um, it's not too late to, to sign up and, and do that and buy your shirt and whatever. Uh, Morton, uh, for however many years, 13 years has been going on. It's my year one. But uh, um, I, it's just been a great, great thing to be part of, and I'm excited to, to be part of it for the first time. So there you can hear it. Coach Zeller all in on Game Ball Run. His first year as head coach at the helm, kind of running this all behind the scenes, but hundreds of thousands of dollars raised for an amazing organization. So if you can't get out, support in any way possible. And if you cannot get out or the Potter Dome is packed like it normally will be, uh, you can always catch the game on NFH Network, and you'll get the highlights from us on Morton Potter TV for that. So let's switch gears. Boys, girls, girls had a much easier night uh, at East Peoria. Yeah, I mean, obviously dominated the East Peoria Raiders 59-23. I mean, fantastic win for the Lady Potters. You know, they're they're in that spot. We talk about seeds for the boys. They're going to get their seeds this Friday. And so obviously, you know, Tuesday was essentially the last game where you get a chance to kind of impress make, those voters. you got to make that statement, yeah, right? Exactly. I think Coach Becker really wanted to come out and say, hey, we're going to be a pretty up-and-coming East Peoria team, and we're going to let everybody know that, hey, we should be the two seed uh, in our region. Yeah, and I, and I mean, obviously, this is a very biased opinion, but I feel like they're certainly deserving of that. And You, you should be, Coach. <laughs> yeah. No, your opinion does matter. Don't let your opinion matter. I mean, I mean, sometimes I feel like if we got to make the seeds that actually be better than the, the votes that come in, and I feel like we would be less biased sometimes in some of those votes. It's a very strange thing. Maybe that's a topic for a future show. Okay. Not, you know, the idea of how the, how the seeds come into play, and especially, it's an online vote of the coaches, and they used to go in person. Person. And, I, and I really do feel like since it's gone online, it's a lot easier to kind of manipulate the votes because you don't need to look somebody in the eye and, you know, announce the way you're voting. So hopefully everybody does the right thing and Lady Potters come into that two seed. Yeah, it's a tough one. I mean, maybe we should just all go to like the American Isles. 
idle style voting. We all get in an auditorium <laughs> and we click a button and then it pops up on the screen and then yeah. somebody will get some really charismatic host. Maybe you could. There we go. Maybe yeah. we'll pitch yourself to the IHSA yeah. right there and you can eliminate teams one by one. Yeah, or I mean, and you know, I mean, maybe, maybe, you know, maybe it should just be computer. I mean, I know we, we're all, we're all into the future in AI now. Maybe we would just go computer ranks like they used to do for the BCS. Who knows? Oh, who knows? But what do we got the girls coming up? What do they got? All right. So um, they got, they got Thursday, excuse me, they got a couple big games. So let's talk about Friday first of all. They got Friday against Dunlap and that's going to be that's going to be a significant Fight. significant one it really is i mean you know Dunlap kind of a team that's that's really really pesky is the mm -hmm. way i would describe them they play you know a, a very aggressive style um it's also exciting cuz it is pink night yep. so it's going to be obviously an excellent game and it's always a very you know heartfelt moment when we get pink night in the potter dome so a really huge game there and then it doesn't get any any less huge because then next week tuesday we've got washington in a game that most likely will be for a conference championship. Senior night, too. Yeah, senior night as well. So double whammy right there. So obviously, if you were into basketball, boys or girls, huge weekend in the Potter Dome, Friday night, Saturday night, and then even coming back Tuesday night for senior night for our uh, Morton Potter girls right there. So uh, keep those in mind. And we'll bring you those seeds next week, and we'll know where we're playing, who we're playing, all that. I could probably give you a little behind the scenes as to what we might think might happen for that as well. So let's switch gears and go from the hardwoods to the mats. Yeah, wrestling. I mean, and, and you know, wrestlers are gearing up for the postseason and they're probably most notable in the last last segment here, Karen Canchola, a first place finish at their last meet. She's rolling her way and grappling to first place after first place after first place. So big shout out to you, Karen. Uh, potentially really big things happening there at State if we can get all the way there. Not lucked you up. So uh, great job there. Now we have a kind of a shift of gears right here, right? So we have, so MPTV is bigger than us, way bigger. We have tons of people behind the scenes. And one of our MPTV videographers who does lots of stuff for the district went out and actually talked to the Morton Junior High Volleyball program about their potential opportunities for repeating at state and all this jam. So it went out last week, but we're gonna show you a little bit snippet right here, right now. I think we're most looking forward to postseason, especially like adding on from last year since the state title and everything we worked for to earn it. Um, I think it's just like postseason more fun and we learn more like grit, gratitude, everything like that and more in postseason than we do regular season. I think that's why everyone's so excited about it and everyone's expecting so much out of us and I think we can do it and I think, I think everyone's so confident and so are we. Okay, so my goal for this season is to continue like our streak of like winning all home games because this year and last year, I don't think we've lost one home game, so I just want to continue that. Okay, so this team, I think it's just such a blessing being on this team with like the amazing coaches, staff, girls, and just the team and all because I think, like I was saying earlier, our confidence is just like there and I think it comes from the coaches, like encouragement. The hard work is like no other. It's Every day, practice, come, work hard, get out of the gym, work hard, get out of the gym. It's just a routine, and everyone just built it, built it into their everyday lives. I'm just looking forward to like postseason and all the games are just so fun, because each game we get better, and I'm excited to watch this team grow and see how we just overcome challenges and stuff. I hope to really improve with my team and personally. I hope that we can make it far and we can do really well in games and overall just improve better every day. I've already learned a new type of, like a ton of new types of hits this season and we just learned another one yesterday and I'm looking forward to doing that a lot more. Especially in volleyball, being a part of a team means so much more because when you're on a team in volleyball, it's not just a one singular person game. Everyone has to work together. Like I remember in the state finals last year, the other team didn't really work very well together. They just had one girl who was really good in front row and back, and that was just about all they had. But we really worked together. We had good passes, good sets, good hits, good serves. I agree a lot with what she said. We have like good positions in every position and not every team has that, which like she said in the state finals, that team only had one good right side, but like we have a ton of good passers, a ton of good hitters, and a ton of good setters. Um, my goal is to get better at volleyball and just improve as a team too. I like the coaches because they have a discipline, so like practices are not easy. They make us get better. Yeah, they know when we're our best self, and if they see us slacking, they just help us improve and what we need to work on and stuff. Um, one of my personal goals is just to be able to continue blocking because that's like a thing that you're going to have to do in high school and college if you want to go all the way there and just keep getting good at every position so that if you're ever needed in a different position, I can do it. 
Something that we try to do is we always try to like think about scenarios. So in the scenario that like we need to obviously pass the ball, which happens very often, we want to get it in specific spots. So what we do with the hula hoop is we try to pass it in the specific spot. So when you hold it, it's like where you want the ball to land in your arms. So it's really helpful because you get like really precise in that. Um, I think one of my goals is to get better at serving and my passing as well. I like the feeling like when you make a good dig or like a good hit or like you ace someone. I'm looking forward to most like going to regionals and hopefully making it to state and just like the bonding that we can have. So pretty great opportunity right there, Andrew. Great job with talking about the more junior high volleyball. And they're already rolling, looking at back-to-back -back state championships. Yeah, I mean, you know, and we talked to Coach Williams when the high school went to state. Yeah. And, you know, he said, you know, that's, that's all, it's about the program, right? And, you know, kind of building success at the lower levels. I mean, obviously, you see that. you got to feel pretty good. Well, not only that, let's talk about step back here. Building picture, you know, building programs from the junior high to the high school. You know, baseball's doing that. A couple of state opportunities right there. Maybe we get one this year. Uh, but junior high basketball, every year is competitive and winning and winning and winning. And now here, girls basketball at the junior high level. And now look yep. where we're at. Uh, bowling, the Robinson brothers mentioned that already right there. So a uh, great job to the Morton 709 district is building these student athletes from the time they're in junior high all the way through their high school. So uh, hats off to all of our coaches, parents, alumni, everybody out there that makes those things happen. So what do we got? Final thoughts. Final thoughts. Um, I give one statistic that we kind of, you know, I, I could have mentioned it during the girls basketball segment, but I want to mention it to you right now. Head coach Bob Becker sitting at 599 career Ooh, wins. Oh, that's a big number. Yeah. 599. 599. Man. So chance for 600 if you come out to Pink Night Friday. Not only do you get all the Pink Night excitement, Ooh. you might get history in the Potter Dome. Do you think there'll be confetti? You know, I mean, I'm hoping there's at least a cake. Ooh, cake. I mean, cake is good. So here's what we're going to do. So we're going to let you go right now, but we're going to lead you out right here for some Morton Red Wings basketball footage. So until next week, Eric Myers, Ryan Lindley. Good luck, guys.